Hey, it's me, uh, Tim Sway. Uh, happy Anti-Black Friday. Now, this is my third annual Anti-Black Friday uh, video. Uh, in previous years, I've made some slightly simpler projects, but this isn't as scary as it looks. The first year, I made some building blocks for my, my boy when he was little, and um, you can watch that video. Last year, I showed you don't even need any power tools, and I made a set of stilts that I ended up giving to my nephew out of another scrap, 2x4. Now, this year, uh, I made this ukulele for my son, who is into music. Um, it's not as hard as it looks. You can do this. So watch the video. There's, I'm gonna try and make this sort of short. I'm gonna narrate it. Now, yes, I understand what you're thinking. You're like, I could have just gone to the store and spent like 50 bucks and got something like this. You can actually get a flying V ukulele. I didn't invent that um, for 50 bucks. And uh, that would be awesome, right? Wrong. It's more than 50 bucks. You're talking about the, the whole, you're, you're investing into a system that is failing. You're talking about the footprint. You don't even know what kind of conditions the thing was built in, what kind of materials it was made out of, what kind of pollutants went into the air. Um, there's a lot more at stake. What do you want to give your kids? Now this, I made out of some recycled materials. Uh, I made it with love and I made it uh, just for him. Now it's special. That $50 thing isn't special. If you can't make stuff yourself, please consider you know shopping from people that can make stuff locally in your neighborhood. You'd be surprised. There's all sorts of awesome people right in your neighborhood that can do all sorts of awesome and amazing things. Please don't be a consumer sucker this year and, uh, and just go out and buy a bunch of junk. We don't need to do that anymore. We're better than that. All right. I'm off my soapbox, watch the video, and then I'll just get next week on my, my usual soapbox, which is kind of similar. No, I've never even held a ukulele before, so I had to do a little bit of internet searching to get some basic ideas of some of the measurements. But after doing that, I took this scrap plywood that my neighbor had given me. He used it to like throw some rocks down on or something while I did some landscaping. And um, I drew out a basic rough shape and taped two pieces together so I could cut them out and have them match. I, of course, cut a sound hole into it. And then I cut out some inch and a half wide strips to make the sides of the body of the guitar. And I glued some hardwood scraps into the corners to give me some solid surfaces there. You'll see that later. Now for the neck, I had some teak uh, furniture that had been thrown away that my brother-in-law gave me that I cleaned it up and there were some pieces of the legs of the tables and chairs that were three pieces of one inch or three quarter inch stock that were glued together. So I already had these pieces laminated together which were perfect for me to cut out my neck from there and like butcher block style is stronger and that's the way guitars tend to be made. Um, there I just popped my bandsaw blade and I had to stop. You've got to be real careful measuring everything to make sure you've got the lengths and widths right. But it's not hard, it's just careful and time consuming. And here I'm just taking out from the block of the neck that's going to be into the body the thickness of the top piece of plywood so it'll all sit nice and flush. I'm going to glue it all together right into that block there as you can see, like that. And then much like the way you make a cabriole leg, I just hot glued the cutout back to the neck so I could have a flat surface and then cut out the second side of the shape. Then the hot glue easily kills apart, and I have my neck blank. Of course, there was some sanding and planing to do. This glue is amazing, by the way, and I'm not being paid to say that, which is why I taped over their logo, of course, but um, I use it to glue a little reinforcement onto the top face of the guitar. And then I wanted to put something inside the sound hole, like a logo, and I don't want to put my logo, so I put uh, Dance Maker's logo, which I wood burned in there just using some scrap steel I had laying around. Luckily, his initial was a V. I had to sort of chamfer the edges of the sides a little bit, and as you can see here, I'm gluing them in. Now, normally a guitar would have this stuff called purfling, which is like a, um, a wood that's got little slices in it, so you can bend it around corners and stuff. You can Google purfling, and you'll see it. Um, but I didn't find it necessary for this. It's so small, there's so little tension, and there's no curves. So I just glued it all together, just plywood to plywood. I had those corners that I made out of the hardwood. And then things weren't perfect, so I trimmed them up a little bit. And then uh, I used just Bondo. Uh, you know, um, there's actually wood filler, but to fill in some of the cracks and, and sand it all down and make it look a little better before priming it. And then, of course, finding all the spots that I missed and having to go back and do some more. And I wanted to give it a, uh, a fun paint job, so I painted the front red, the back black, and I didn't tape it off so there'd be some overspray. But there wasn't enough, so I added some overspray. 
as you can see here. I cut the fingerboard out of the same teak. It was a piece that I had cut off when I ripped down the neck. Now the hardest part of making any kind of fretted string instrument is actually putting the frets in. Uh, there are online fret calculators that you can use, and uh, I'd recommend working in millimeters, as you can see I'm doing here, to help you really accurately mark where you're going to cut your frets in. Um, I built this little jig, you can see this piece of plywood um, with these straight lines on it, so I really very carefully set everything up nice and straight. Uh, I have that fence that I have my triangle on, uh, my square on, to, to help me cut my lines. Now I had fret wire laying around because I've messed around making instruments before. Um, so I'm using fret wire, I cut the slots, but if you don't have fret wire, you can use nails. And I was going to do it just to show how to do it, but I ended up just using my fret wire because it was easier. But you just have to cut those slots a little wider to hold the nail, and you can just glue them in. Steve Carmichael did it when he built a guitar out of a 2x4. I strongly recommend watching his video about that. And, uh, and I used for markers, I just had some half-inch uh, plugs laying around that I drilled and put in, sanded it all down before putting my frets in, cutting my slots deeper in. Now, fretting is a very difficult process, but uh, doing something like this isn't too hard because it's all very flat and straight. Cut your slot, make sure it's deep enough for the tang of the fret, put a little bit of super glue in there, and hammer it in. The hard part is making them all smooth, even, and feel good, which we're going to get to next. Now this is just a piece of scrap steel that I uh, put some sandpaper on. It's a nice flat surface, and I wanted to make all those frets nice and flat, so I sanded them down flat. I sanded the edges of them flat on the belt sander, which you're not supposed to do because you could heat them up and unseat them, but with the crazy glue in there and stuff, I wasn't too worried, and it all worked out pretty well. Now the bridge, I uh, cut from the, another cut off of that same teak, and this was I was just sort of experimenting. I looked at some pictures of bridges. I tried some different tools and techniques, and I ended up using the sanders a lot to just sort of sand down and shape the bridge the way I wanted it. Of course, resulting in lots of hand sanding. I drilled four holes in, uh, spanning the distance of an inch and a half, evenly spread out from beginning to end for the strings. Um, and that's where you're going to tie the strings. And then I cut a little slot where I'm going to cut this scrap ebony piano key to uh, use as my actual bridge that the strings will sit on. I also made a nut out of the same ebony coming up. A lot of sanding, you should probably not do it like that, but I'm not afraid to get a little bit of a sandpaper scar. And just so you know, ebony is uh, considered kind of toxic, so you should probably wear a mask. I don't know what I was thinking when I cut this headstock, but I had to really cram those tuners in there and also make them turn the wrong direction at times. So you might want to think that through a little better than me. And it was too thin, so I had to make these little plastic spacers because the guitar tuners I had laying around were too tall. You could also get the right tuners, but well, that's not really my style. So then I glued the fingerboard on and I glued the bridge on. I used wood glue on parts and then epoxy on other parts. There's a little bit of, you know, Cutting your slots, which I got the measurements off the internet, putting it all together. I bought these strings at a music store, but I think next time I'll just buy them at a bait and tackle shop because they just look like fishing line to me. And I also ended up adding some screws to the bridge just to make sure it would stay down nice and tight. Probably unnecessary. <laughs> 